is far more active than White's. White's king is kind of trapped in a box over there on that right side, unable to enter the action, being able to centralize itself. And there we go, Magnus Carlsen kicks that White King to the corner. Um, very sensible play. Magnus now is threatening to step his rook up one square, check the White King, and grab White's pawn in the center of the board. All of White's pawns are isolated. White's bishop is kind of trapped there, guarding his, court, his pawn in the corner. Looks like Magnus is in control. Yeah. A lot of hard work to be done. Still not too much material left on the board, but Magnus, remember, end game master as well. And I did mention that uh, almost all the games were still going on. They, well, basically almost everyone finished now. And uh, a couple of, yeah, <laughs> shouldn't have said that, but uh, a couple of very interesting results. So Yankris of Duda, you know, lost in the first game against Ferdinanda. He's winning the second game, won against fantastic Wesley So, so that's super interesting. And also Shakria and Mandiaro got a win against another, I mean, prodigy, Alireza Verusia, another youngster, that is super interesting. But a win for Mamdiaro there, and also uh, Lenia dominguez Perez won against Johan Sebastian Christians. And uh, just now, Timo Rajapo got a win there against Adel Pari. So this is the only game now going on. Magnus Carlsen is the only one at the Meltwater office is still playing, fighting for a win. Yes, fighting for a win and minimal risk as well, which is always pleasant um, in a position where the clocks are ticking. If we also, I mean, if we do look at the clocks, Magnus Carlsen with just under four minutes, Quangliam only 30 seconds. Um, it's going to be very difficult for White to hold this one. Um, White's king just so badly placed. What do you think, Yvanka? Yeah. Chances of holding? No, I, I mean, if it would only just the White king being badly placed, I would say maybe he has some chances. But it's not just that, David. It's also, if I look at those poor white pawns, there are two of them are on white squares, and uh, I could just see a scenario where, say, Magnus manages to actually swap off rooks. Well, it's going to be curtains on one of those pawns. So I think it's very, very difficult. I don't think he has any practical chances of saving it, actually. Yeah, um, I would agree. But uh, talking of practical chances, Le Quang, yeah, he's just trying to make the, uh, the best of a bad situation by offering that trade of bishops. Um, as good, actually. Having said that, suddenly my my <laughs> I suddenly became a slightly more positive because if the rooks come off, then I suddenly think that actually bishops come off. Oh, sorry, bishops come off. Then maybe with an active rook, a white will have chances to at least exchange off some boards. Yeah, and uh, in the current position, we do see the computer's recommendations. The top three engine suggestions are actually, um, I mean, two of them make sense. One of them is just to move the black rook away. One of them is to give check with the black rook. But I was going to say it's the third move that to me is the most natural, keeping those bishops on the board. Because actually, although it's not the first choice of the engine, it for a human is the most logical. You keep a bishop which can target two of your opponent's pawns. And black's bishop on light squares uh, Black's pawns or dark squares, they complement each other perfectly. Um, you don't want to release the tension, give your opponent an easy plan, and exchanging the bishops would have given White an easy plan of just trying to hoover off yeah. the pawns. And uh, just look at how he's retreated his bishop to a diagonal where it's attacking the pawn, and he's moved his rook to a very safe square, which also is very flexible. And there you go, he's trying to swap off rooks because the bishop ending is one. Yeah, um, that is, I think, the key move for Magnus Carlsen. I think it's actually a winning move for Magnus Carlsen. I expect to see that computer bar kind of swing the whole way across the black side soon because now White has a huge, I mean, I mean it's a catastrophe, right? Either you trade rooks and go into a losing bishop end game because White's pawns will just drop off or you just give up White's pawn in centre. He does trade rooks. Yeah, and, and look at this. Move. Look at this. Is just, this is technique at work. He just moves his bishop to the edge of the board and look at the bishop in his dance on two diagonals, keeping his eye on both of those pawns, and that white king, he said it, <laughs> what's it doing? <laughs> just stranded, and there's just nothing that the Kramnian can do. Yeah, I mean, look at this. Black's king is one of the most active kings you'll ever see in an endgame. White's king is stuck protecting the pawn in front of it, and yeah, Yoanka, you mentioned it, that bishop move, like, like even the top grandmasters would struggle to find that one, I think. Putting that bishop, Black's bishop on that square, eyeing up those two white pawns. Magnus did it so quickly, and now he's even offering a bishop trade because he understands that if the bishops disappear, well, Black's king will be quick enough to stop White's central pawn um, from running towards its end goal and becoming a queen. Um, really quickly and nicely calculated there by Magnus. He's a pawn up right now, and if White can't take the bishops off the board, then slowly but surely, Black's two corner pawns there on the left side, they will start to walk forward and make a new queen. Yeah, and uh, I think we're probably going to see a resignation soon, actually. No. There's just no hope for 
whatsoever because the white bishop just cannot stop those two pawns from marching. And only 10 seconds, well, 11. <laughs> you called it, Ivanka. He resigns. Uh, there it is, the first win of the tournament for Magnus Carlsen in the new NHS Classic.